I'm Scott Schiller, and this is Team G503. Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and in this video, I'll be installing a premium bell crank repair kit from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Before we begin, I've got my bell crank here, and I've sandblasted it, primed it, and painted it, and I've ran a tap through the threads, and I've cleaned the paint out from the inside so everything's smooth and nice. Here I've got my premium bell crank repair kit from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Not included in the kit, I purchased a new grease circ just to be sure that I was able to get grease properly into the joints. The one that was on the bell crank previously was pretty beat up and I just wasn't sure of it. Let's take a look here at part number 915762 plus, the premium bell crank repair kit. You open it up here and we've got some fantastic nicely made parts here. This is a Japanese bearing and it's a really high quality one. I'll show you about these later. A very high quality shaft. You can tell it's quality just by looking at it. Very nicely machined and precision made. Empty out the bag here into my hand and we'll see all the rest of the goodies. There's the other bearing. And here we have the seals. These are grease seals, they're not O-rings. I'll show you that later in the video. A couple of the grease seals, you need two of those. And then we've got the castellated nut. Again, very high quality, very well machined. We've got a couple of washers here. One of the washers has a lock tab on it and we'll show you where that goes later. And then we've got our tapered pin. This is definitely one of the important ones in the assembly. Next, we have the dust shield. Last but not least, we have our cotter pin. That's everything that comes in the premium bell crank repair kit. I've cleaned out the mount on the inside with a wire wheel just to be sure that this shaft will slip very nicely and easily into it. Line up the shaft where that square machined area is in dead line with the two holes that are in front of the mount on the axle. The shaft fits very nicely into the mount and does not wiggle either way. No movement at all. I'm going to place my hand here on the bottom and tap the shaft until it's flush with a soft faced hammer. As you can see on the bottom here, I've got the shaft flush with the bottom. And if I've lined this all up correctly, my tapered pin, let me show you this here, we've got a machine side here where it's square on one end and fully round on the other. You want to insert the tapered end in facing the notch of the shaft. Before inserting the tapered pin, you can look inside the hole and make sure everything lines up. I'm using a small ball peen hammer to simply tap the pin in. Towards the end, you can give it a few good hard blows and make sure the pin is flush with the outside of the cast housing. The inside of the bell crank is all clean and free of paint or any other debris. I'll spray a little lubricant inside the bell crank just to make the bearing slide in a little bit easier. Here I've got my bearing and I need to show you this, this is important. On one side of the bearing you'll see it's thicker where you can actually see the maker's mark and on the inside it's thinner. You want to place the thinner side into the side of the bell crank and have the heavier side towards you or the outside. I'm working on a small block of 2x12 pine. I like to keep it around the shop for just purposes like this. I'm taking a soft face hammer and just driving the bearing in flush and you don't have to hit it hard. It should go in pretty easily. Flip the bell crank over and here's where you're going to see where the piece of 2x12 really helps out. We'll get this started just by pressing in hand and we can move the bell crank so it's flush on the opposite side and again just give it a couple of taps with our soft face hammer. Let's take a look at these grease seals. These are actually seals, they're not O-rings. I'm pointing here at the lip of the inside of the seal and you'll notice a shiny copper colored area on the outside. The lip is going to go to the outside or towards you on the bell crank. I've got a socket here and I've got to set the depth of the bearing just so I can get the seal in. I'm just going to line up the socket and just give it a couple gentle taps and check out how far I've driven it. You don't want to drive the bearing too far. You want to drive it about the width of the seal. I'm using an 18 millimeter socket and it seems to be just about the right size to not damage the bearing and go on the inside of the bell crank. Check inside the bell crank to make sure the two bearings have a space between them where the zerk inserts the grease. Ideally, the bearing should be split 50-50 over the hole where the grease inserts with the zerk. Now remember, we're going to keep the shiny side down and the lip of the seal to the top. You simply press it in by hand and double check to make sure that it's flush with the outside of the bell crank. I'll flip it over and install the opposite side grease seal. Once again, just so we all remember, the shiny side or the coppery side goes down and the lip side goes up. And just press that in by hand until it's flush. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little high temp grease, a very little amount to the shaft. This will help in assembly so I won't tear any of the seals and the bell crank will go back on very smoothly. All you need is a little bit. 
I'm also going to put a small amount of grease onto the seals, not inside the bell crank, just on the seals to make it easier to slide onto the shaft. I'll do both sides, a little dab, and then I'm going to install the washer. This is the one that does not have the locking tab. Make sure it's flush with the cast bracket. Now we'll take the bell crank and note the orientation. We've got the two holes in the front and we've got the actual ball to the side of the axle. Simply slip it on, wiggle it back and forth, it'll go on really smoothly. Next, we'll take the washer with the lock tab and we'll orient it onto the shaft where the machine area is for the tab to slide onto. Push this down flush with the top of the bell crank. Next, we'll install the dust shield. I'll orient it so the outside or open side is facing down towards the bell crank. Now we have our castellated nut. We'll install that and you'll notice this will go onto this shaft like glass. It's amazing the machining how well it is done with these two pieces. Tighten the castellated nut finger tight. Then I'll use a large crescent wrench to continue to tighten the castellated nut. You don't have to tighten it a lot. Just a couple of turns and keep trying to move the bell crank back and forth. When you start to feel resistance, stop. You don't want to over tighten the nut. Once it's snug and you have a little resistance on the arm, back it up just one tooth, as I will say, inside the castellated nut and you'll see how freely this moves. I've got it lined up here with the hole in the shaft so I can insert the cotter pin and lock the castellated nut in place. Insert the cotter pin through the hole and use a pair of needle nose pliers or the legs to bend the ears back and lock the cotter pin in place. The cotter pin secures the castellated nut in place so it can't vibrate or come loose. I'll give the bell crank one last turn and up and down to see if there's any play and there's not. It's like glass. The last thing I'll need to do is install my new zerk on the side of the bell crank and just give it a little tight, not too tight with the wrench. You don't want to snap that off and then we'll fill the inside with grease. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video informative and helpful. If you'd like to follow along with the build of the Team G503 1943 Willis MB, you can do so by subscribing to Team G503 on YouTube. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe and happy jeeping.